Hi everyone, welcome to the IPFS Core Implementations Weekly Sync for Monday the 26th of October 2020. I am Aching Brain, I will be your host. We're going to play the game of what we've done, what we've got by, what we're doing next. We're going to go through our high priority initiatives, our um, slightly lower priority initiatives, and then design review, parking lot, Q&A, all that. We're going to have a great time. Uh, it's going to be amazing. Probably the best one ever. Uh, without further ado, mm -hmm. let's get started with the high priority initiative. So upcoming and shipped releases. Um, I can talk about mm -hmm. JSON quickly. That is going to ship soon. Uh, we got the types in at the end of last week, thanks to some heroic efforts from, from Iraqi, uh, which is very much appreciated. Uh, and so mm -hmm. that's going to go out uh, you know, very soon, as long as no one tells me that the types aren't working. So I'm just trying to clear up some uh, sort of you know, low-hanging fruit bug fixes and that kind of thing uh, before we release that tomorrow or maybe Wednesday, worst case. Um, it's going to include the removal of Sequoia. Uh, so that's a, a thing that people should be aware of. Uh, and also uh, like lots of small fixes trying to like bring something, something that's kind of fallen out of the of the types work is the uh, a lot of the APIs aren't aligned between the HTTP client and the core and that's supposed to be. So some of those uh, APIs are now more aligned than they were before, um, which hopefully will reduce confusion. They may trip some people up. Please do read the release notes. It's going to be very important. Anyway, that's it. Who else can talk about upcoming releases? There will probably be an IP get release this week. Uh, yeah, go IPFS 0.8. Uh, still some things that need to get done. We last last week, uh, not a lot happened on that front between uh, people being people being out of town and uh, and just other things coming up. But uh, we are we are post most of our CI hell, and so uh, should be should be getting a move on. I have some updates for IP Git that are not uh, posted as PRs yet. So if there's anything, any features you want to get in uh, before that release, let me know. Or if, it, if the features already been decided, then we can always put them in next time. Um, and quick uh, shout out that uh, IPFS desktop 0.13 uh, shipped uh, some time ago, with, like in the past two weeks. Um, and it's shipped with Go IPFS 0.7. So that's that. Sweet. Uh, to anyone watching, of course, we didn't have a catch up last week. So that is why that is a notable release for this, uh, this catch up. Uh, cool. Moving on uh, the pinning services. Yes. So. Um, as far as the pinning services are going, uh, I, uh, the implementation is essentially complete, and I want to have a review of that before PRing that uh, today, if everything looks good. And um, that will uh, put the pinning services uh, in a much better place as far as performance is concerned by backing it with our data store. Um, so the changes there uh, should there they're not going to be any breaking API changes or anything like that. They should be invisible. Things should just work faster, and it, uh, put some of the groundwork down for uh, API changes that will be um, up and coming to be in sync with the remote pending API. So that's on track for all, all that getting done uh, this week and being part of the uh, the upcoming release. Yeah, we also, so that relates, I don't remember if I posted in here or not um, last uh, last week, but yeah, we had some uh, really productive discussions trying to align the, uh, what we want the new sort of local pinning API to look like with the remote pinning API. And so they'll be basically the same. Um, and I think Lido linked in there, uh, some small changes to the remote API. Ah, yes. Yes, one thing that came out of that was uh, the default the default search uh, by name was uh, case insensitive uh, contains so like you know star word star effectively 
um, is what you are looking for. And that's like an expensive operation to run, especially as the default. So uh, we would like to change the default so that it is a fast exact match, something that you can do on an indexed thing in like O of one. Uh, and that would also make it really nice to use with your local data store that might have like, you know, a crazy number of pins. So that, that PR is up there if you have uh, any thoughts. But uh, I think, you know, uh, learning from, from some of our lessons of things like IPFS pin LS and having the defaults be the fast thing and letting people opt into the more information slower one, I think is the, the smarter move. Also, once we land some of this, the uh, Go IPFS PRs with some testing, there will be some examples out there for if people want to test their client against a remote service, they can sort of see what it is that we're doing, which is just sort of spin up a Docker container with uh, Andrew's um, pinning service server, and then just like run some queries again, run some HTTP queries against it and like see how everything goes. Do we actually have any published benchmarks already that we can uh, present it against? Uh, for the local stuff, uh, Alex, um, are there scripts that you used when you collected your benchmarks? Uh, yeah, uh, so in the issue on JS IPFS, I put the scripts up that I was using there, but they're just ad hoc things. It's not um, like in test ground. Well, I'm just wondering if they're like shell scripts that we could run against Go IPFS or if they're specific. Okay. Yeah, there's a awesome. JavaScript test that you can just flip uh, the daemon controller to the different implementations and, and it'll kick out like CSV formatted data. You can just draw a graph on. Oh, nice. and, and Alex has already collected some data points that are in a graph somewhere about how slow Go IPFS is currently. So. Okay, that would yeah. I'd like to yeah. like to be able to show that against that same graph and be able to see. Yeah. And there's also a, the benchmark issue that Matt Ober added to Go IPFS repo, um, where he did some analysis against Badger. So it would be worth once we get like a branch or something of that pinging okay. him, and maybe he can run his his benchmarks against it to to validate. Did that cover yeah. ping or just the data store performance in general? It was just pin pin modifications. Oh, okay. Then that would be perfect. Yeah, I, I spoke with him about that. He's he's good once we have something to to test. All right. Cool. Uh, next up on the list is Sekaya removal. So um, I talked about JSIPFS. That's going to be going, well, it's going to be removed in the next release, which is going to land imminent. Uh, next up is JS improves discoverability and connectivity. That's cool. Before, one thing about uh, SecIO removal, Jacob, what is there an update on when we uh, are going to just turn things off for people for a little bit? Yeah, let's let's sync up this week. Uh, we had some potential like timeline changes on some stuff, but we'll we'll sync up, and I think we should be able to reasonably shut some stuff off soon. So let's, we can touch base offline. Okay, so in the improved discoverability and discoverability and connectivity in JS, I was out last week, so there was not that much progress. But in the outer relay front, uh, I have only one PR pending, which is uh, the custom announce filter to filter out the to provide the users the, the ability to filter out addresses that they don't want to announce. Uh, it's mostly done. I just need to add tests, so it should be done probably today. Uh, in the rendezvous part. Uh, I'm mostly blocked now uh, on the Discovery API and the Rendezvous implementation PRs, and uh, I will probably start creating a Rendezvous example uh, in the meantime. And that will be the, this for this week. Along the lines of JSOPDP, uh, just FYI, we did release a patch last week that fixes like leaking streams that weren't closing properly. Um, so that that's patched and then there's some work to improve the interfaces there that i've started but that likely won't land until maybe next week or something that hopefully we can ship with um, lipid p030 
Cool. Uh, that is it for the end of the high priority initiatives. So moving on to the other initiatives, uh, improving web UI file add. Uh, not much update on there. Um, it's been kind of behind the types and TypeScript stuff. So hopefully it's this week, um, but PRs are there. Um, next one is also mine, but Alex already talked about it. TypeScript stuff. Uh, it's land EDA. Thanks Alex for uh, tag teaming this through. Uh, we'll probably be adding more stuff over time because it doesn't quite cover everything, but it was good to actually learn something and then improve things in the tree. Uh, next up is Badger to support. I think we're mostly just uh, waiting on the Badger folks to come up with a release and then decide whether a breaking change that they made is going to happen transparently or whether we're going to just be skipping straight to Badger 3. Uh, Andrew, has, have they updated anything about that or not yet? No, I've I've been checking and they haven't, unless they posted it just, just before this meeting, uh, they uh, have not yet made a release yet. And so, yeah, like you said, um, they introduced some breaking changes, but their rule, which they have been following quite well, is that if, if they break it, break it, then they'll do another uh, major release at this point. So yeah, we don't know if we'll go to Badger 2 or Badger, uh, Badger 3 to get these features. So um, I'll, I can I can ping them and see if I can get a um, an ETA ETA on that, but I suspect that they don't really have one at this point. Yeah, I think they. I mean, I last I checked, they were supposed to be they were doing like time based releases like every so often, but but maybe for something bigger where there's a breaking change, they they change the they change the rules around. Well, what's our deadline on 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 this? I mean, if it's if it's ready before the RC is ready to go out, then it makes it in. And if it's not, then it makes it into the next one. All right, that's simple. <laughs> cool. Uh, next up, DNS adder resolving in JS. Yeah, that the the three PRs uh, for multi others MAF, MT, and Liquid P are ready for review. I just addressed the review of the MAFMT uh, earlier today. And uh, I just need to test the Michael's PR that updates the examples to use the new DNS other uh, multi others and check if uh, everything is now working as expected. So I hope that we will get this done this week. Right. Um, that brings us to the end of the. Uh, other initiatives. Uh, so now moving on to the other stuff. So uh, design review proposals. Has anybody got anything they would like to have a design review about? No, cool. Is anyone blocked or does anybody have an ask? Uh, I got the question regarding the uh, rendezvous and discovery API. Um, are those uh, like are those like a PRs with a do documentation, or is it at the level of just just implementation code? Uh, the rendezvous it's a, yeah. it's the PR with the implementation in the liquid P rendezvous module. The discovery API is an issue where there is a proposal where basically the goal is to use the rendezvous and the content routing and eventually other modules in the future for this discovery of services. And so the, it's basically an issue I can uh, send a link to you, uh, where is my proposal on how we should do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you could like uh, link. I put in a note. Yeah, thanks. Has anybody got any questions? Cool. Okay, so then the parking lot, anything that doesn't fit anywhere else? Um, I just put an item there. So <clears throat> we do have a bunch of places in JSIPFS where we say 
So there's an interface for say repo and you can provide an implementation, uh, but pretty much there's a JS IPFS repo implementation and similar stuff for BitSwap. And there are some interface definitions and markdown files uh, that potentially others could implement. So what I would like to do is actually have a interface definitions in TypeScript for those things. Uh, and then make sure that our code is against the interface definition versus actual implementation. So others can actually do implement them and do validate the implementations by running a type checker if they want to, uh, along with the test if they do. I, there's already a bunch of places where we sort of do use internals that are not part of the interface definitions. So I think this would help us to be more honest about what we using and what we want interface to be. Uh, and now that we have types in places, it's actually very easy to do that and ensure that we do the right thing there. Um, I think like a good place to start for that might be something like the data store, because we have um, we have like interface data store, which defines a suite of acceptance tests fundamentally that verifies that the implementation is a data store. Um, and adding types to that would be like a, mm -hmm. a logical extension. Because then if that's a, like if that pans out and that works, then we can totally replicate that pan in other things. Okay, uh, so are you saying we should add it to there or have a separate repo? I was sort of thinking that having the interface as a separate thing so you don't have to pull in other dependencies would be useful uh, on its own, but maybe that's a better place to do it. Where all the implementations of the data store would depend on the interface. Uh, to run the acceptance tests. So they already depend on. Okay. Sounds good. Cool. Um, all right. Uh, I guess that's it. That's the end of the parking lot. Uh, please fill in your weekly updates. Uh, it's lovely to know what everyone's been doing. Um, this has been the Core Implementations Weekly Sync uh, for Monday, the 26th of October. It's been amazing. I told you it was going to be really good. Thank you very much. See you all next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.